Are there certain messages you're getting from the other side that are new or unique during this time? I remember I was dreaming very clearly, and I was in Berlin, and it was 1938. So it shows me that that part of my soul probably was alive at that time in the German side. I, I, I had to think, did I kill people? Oh my God, I couldn't have killed people. We're, we're really gonna blow people's minds today if we say even that, even World War II, was here to help humanity or help all of consciousness. I recognize that I was definitely a part of that. And I, I can't think of it too much because this goes back to why people ask me, why can't we remember our past lives? And part of the reason I say is God's grace, because if we came back to this vibration, this school, and we remembered the atrocities, or bad things we've done, we'd be so obsessed with that coming back here that our, that our whole life would be worried about that, or obsessed about that, instead of starting new, because we, before we come back into the body, the physical body, we go through what's called the valley of forgetfulness. And it's like a clean slate. So these souls sacrifice themselves to help with evolving the consciousness, bringing the consciousness back up. And right now we're in a major cleansing too, because we've got to realize that hate doesn't work. War does not work. These are evolved beings. These are ascended souls. Thank you. Who put themselves through that in order to teach humanity what is wrong, what is right. The, the number one lesson I've found for most souls that come here is... Are you ready to shine? Shine bright. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. <laughs> if you've ever wondered what the spirit realm has to say about what's going on in the world, then do we have the James Von Prague wisdom from the spirit, guys? Show for you. Today, I'll be talking with James Von Prague, TV star, medium, and the author of over 12 number one New York Times bestselling books, including Wisdom from Your Spirit, guys. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today about your soul mission, soul contract, the earth and why you're here, in particular now on planet earth. In other words, all about our transformation and shift to a higher level. So welcome back to the show, James. Are you ready to shine? I'm ready to shine. Hi, Hannah Bear. <laughs> <laughs> so Hannah Bear Thank usually you. comes in right after the start. Oh, I know you've got a brick. Oh, do you want to say something? You're so cute. Yeah. I know. You're he's, so cute. He's best a special soul, isn't he? She's yeah. a very special soul. Beautiful. She said, I want to sing when I get older. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to sing? I sing. How do you sing now? You having fun? Fun. Happy? Are you happy? You make everybody happy. Just seeing you make everybody happy. <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, do you want to stay in my lap as we do this, or do you want to go get ready for bed? Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Let's How about you stay right in this, and I'll get ready for bed. No. <laughs> no I like this. Well, the, the audience knows that very shortly she will be apparently taking over. All right, down. All right. Sit, do you want to wait by? <laughs> Bye, Bye, sweetheart. Bye, baby. <laughs> Bye, honey bear. <laughs> All right. So the, the trick is, James, how do we go from that note to a <laughs> serious note? Oh, my gosh. So here, here we go. We're going to dive us right into things. Before we dive right into things, James, is humanity in trouble? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to judge it like that, but um, it's certainly some conditions have changed and will be changing. I'll put it that way. Some major learning things going on here, learning them lessons coming in. Um, it's interesting because I've been, I'm fascinated with World War II. And he's been Nazi Germany, I can't get enough of it. So I had 55 relatives die in Auschwitz. And I've always had this really weird sense of a connection. So I definitely know I was there in a past life. 
Do I know a side? Not really, but I was, I was watching some stuff for documentaries. I love history. And I'm watching and thinking, well, these people had this whole political movement that, you know, that was the way they wanted to get, they thought it was freedom and there was a whole movement and then the, the whole war happened. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's amazing. But um, I think these things happen, these situations, these conditions, I think we, ch- I think that we, choose certain things like we come back to school earth because you know it affords us various opportunities good better and different um conditions that we have to learn from whether it's on a personal level or a group level and a group consciousness of many souls um there i think there are many variations michael why people come back here and i think are we in trouble um we're always in trouble i guess I mean, we're always we're always learning but we're always learning something the degree of what we're learning the subject what we're learning changes right but we're we're the same soul, but we're maybe expanded in certain ways, or our per- perceptions change a certain way. And maybe you look at something very differently than you used to. I mean, I know now at this age, I look at people and I don't judge them. Like I used to, being a Virgo, I used to judge people a little bit. You know, and I realized, you know, who are we to judge? You know, who am I to judge? Because you don't know what that person's background is. You don't know what level of awareness that there are. You don't know if they're aware of spirituality or not, if they even know themselves or they're just playing the game to belong. So who are we to judge? You know, this is a school room that we have souls from all different levels of being. Baby, baby souls just learning like nursery school. Postgraduate souls were here to help with healing and compassion and kindness. And then you have all the souls in the middle trying to figure it out, you know? So I, I think... Uh, also, I, I can't stop answering this question because it's a good one. Um, I, as I'm getting older too, this just came up and I talked to a friend of mine about this. Something I feel very comfortable about myself, and I, and I teach this to my mediumship students all the time. One of the most important factors is you have to know yourself. I think the more once a soul knows themselves, life is a bit easier, and you don't feel like you're pulled in different directions because you know who you are, and you've got to see things through your space and if we pay attention to what other people think of us, we'll be lost, right? We'll, we're giving up our power. We don't want to give up our power. We're, we want to acknowledge our power, realize our power, and empower our power, right? That's really what we want to do. And I don't know. So anyway, that's the answer to the question, I think. <laughs> that's a long answer. Thank you. I, I have a, a, a Jewish background. Uh, I have a Hebrew name, Meir, which means he who brings in the light. And I... I lost a lot of relatives, uh, known and unknown, uh, in, in the concentration camps. And I just learned that, that my wife, uh, lost a lot of relatives known and unknown when the communists came into China, uh, just post world war II. What is the, and I, I'm also, I'm saying this without judgment. I want to learn here. Right. What is the fascination with understanding World War II, because we were taught in Hebrew school. So I went to Hebrew school. I went to Catholic school. I went to Unitarian high school. I got all beautifully confused uh, in the best of ways. Uh, but I was told, if you don't learn the past, you're destined to repeat it. But it actually seems like if we learn the past too much, we're sucked into that energy field. I, I, I call that uh, epi, uh, epigenetics, which means to be caught in the field of past energy. So how do you watch that and what do you watch it for to learn for to help you? Because you wouldn't do anything that's not purposeful, I'm convinced. No, I, 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 I think, again, as a younger person, it changes as you get older. It's, and for when I was younger, it was, a, it was a sense of a curiosity, number one. But that was deeper than a curiosity because I felt like I knew this story. I, I recognized it. I recognized the pageantry. I recognized Hitler. I, rec- I just knew uh, anything that came on any books. I've read so many books on it, any magazines in my day, when I, in the 50s and 60s and so forth. And I just, I was obsessed. And then... All of my friends, this is weird, all of my friends that I have have the exact same fascination. Seriously, exact same one. So I know that's really interesting. So I think as a soul group, we definitely were there. Now, this the thing is very interesting is my family were killed. Auschwitz, they were killed there. So, and I, this will blow you away, Michael. I was, uh, had a sleep, uh, I was sleeping one night and I was just about to that twilight state, we about to wake up. And I remember I was dreaming very clearly and I was in Berlin and it was 1938. It was a cobblestone street, and I was on one side, and a gentleman was on the other side in a three-piece suit, fedora hat, and I was also a three-piece suit, fedora hat. And he, I said, from across the street, I have to go now. And he goes, okay, we'll see you later. Hi, Hitler. And I went, hi, oh, I, I can't say that anymore. And I woke up. 
So it shows me that that part of my soul probably was alive at that time in the German side. But then, I, and I've thought about this, because I was like, well, is that responsible for killing my family? I don't think so. But I think that there was a part of my soul that experienced that lifetime. And I watched it again last night about the whole German thing. And the more I look into it, and I'm, I'm very much into the psychology of things. I was going to be a psych- psychiatrist. I was going to be a psychologist or an anti-psychiatrist. And I decided to do the other spiritual work, talking to dead people. But I'm still fascinated with how the mind works, how the brain, you know, we think. And I do believe that um, uh, I think we've all lived, you know, I, I also, I'm sure you do too, probably believe in quantum physics. So past, present, future, all one, right? So I recognize that I was definitely a part of that. And I, I can't think of it too much because this goes back to why people ask me, why can't we remember our past lives? And part of the reason I say is God's grace, because if we came back to this vibration, this school, and we remembered the atrocities or bad things we've done, we'd be so obsessed with that coming back here that our, that our whole life would be worried about that or obsessed about that instead of starting new, because we, before we come back into the body, the physical body, we go through what's called the valley of forgetfulness. And it's like a clean slate. And you really will, you're so, you will have some memory or a, a, a identification or a reference. And that with me, Germany definitely was one, New Orleans, uh, certain place in Europe. And then there are other places and countries, I don't care to be there. I just don't have any feeling for them. But I, I do think it's soul memory. And I think I, I, I had to think that I killed people. Oh my God, I couldn't have killed people. But I got to think that back in that time, the whole political era was all about, I don't think they, again, I don't think they knew, a lot of the German people didn't know what was going on, I think. I think they just followed someone to make their country better and there was a whole nationality type of thing. And I think that they got caught up in all of that. I don't know, so, but I, I definitely think I was a part of that. Um, I think we all were. And now we're back doing spiritual work. It well begets the question, if we're calling this an earth school, if you and I am sure agree that this is all a setup and this is all a play and it's all happening for a reason, then we're, we're really gonna blow people's minds today if we say even that, even World War II, was here to help humanity or help all of consciousness. Right. So the people that often, I have often said this, people say, how can we justify and rationalize the the millions that were killed in the camps and so forth? And I, I, to me, the first thing I thought of this is years ago is these are evolved beings. These were ascended souls who put themselves through that in order to teach humanity what is wrong, what is right. So these souls sacrifice themselves. Um, that's how I feel. I won't know until I pass over, but I feel as if they've sacrificed themselves on a large scale to help with evolving the consciousness, bringing the consciousness back up. So I think that we have to, everyone through all the, um, the earth world has to go through a cleansing period in some ways. And right now we're in a major cleansing too, because we've got to realize that hate doesn't work. War does not work because the one thing that is really important is that, we, and we realize that when we pass over to the spirit world, there are two things that are very, very real. And you know from NDEs you've had, uh, I had one NDE, but I realized that um, there is no death. Number one, there's no death. That's an illusion. There's no such thing. You can't die. You can't kill energy. You, can, you go back to your higher self. This is just the smallest part of the soul. I always say the physical body is like 30% of the soul. 70 is already out here, right? And then the other thing is separativeness. We have a sense in this dimension that we have to be separate from one another. And the truth is we're not separate. We're part of each other. And I, I got that, Michael, from uh, a near-death experience that I had was an awareness that, and again, outside what of What happened? Well, I was aware that, um, I'm going to detail how it happened, but I, I hurt, hurt my head. I popped out of the body. And I was aware um, immediately uh, that uh, my cousin had passed much, many years earlier, who taught me metaphysics when I was a child. She came to me, and I hadn't seen her before this. And I said, I need help. Um, and your personality, you know, survives. And I said, and she goes, don't worry, you'll be out of it soon. And I said, you mean out of it or out of it? Can you please help me out here? Because I need to know because your personality, sense of humor yeah. stays there. But immediately after she, she just left, f- faded out. And I was aware of this beautiful tapestry above my head and above everybody's head. About, it's like a universal tapestry. It's that matrix, if you will. And I realized that every thought we had creates like this thread of color 
this light, this structure that bleeds into that tapestry and influences that tapestry. And, it, and you have good positive thoughts, as beautiful colors are expressed and, and shared in that tapestry, that blanket of beingness. And, and same with dark thoughts or negative things. It's not as colorful. It doesn't move as quickly. Not as, you know, not free. It's limited. And I thought, wow, if people realize that what they did in killing another person, that they're actually killing themselves, yeah. that they're actually, it's bad for your own growth, but it's, you're, you're, it's, it's the rippling effect for everybody. And you've got to be responsible for that. If people realize that when they pass over, they'll feel everything 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger than originally given, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, they got to live that and they got to feel it from another soul's perspective. So if they hurt someone, they're going to feel what that soul felt like when they were hurt, right? Because if people realize that, that, maybe they'd wake up a little bit more. And if they realize, I mean, one of the things I'm sure that you're teaching in your school of mystical arts and, and we've been working with is that everything goes into that tapestry. Every thought, every action, every non-action is all a note that you're singing in vibration or out of accord for that matter. That's right. And, and there is no God that goes, you go here, you go there, you go there. We judge ourselves. So we, we look and see what, what test did we pass? Did we pass the test this time around of compassion, of kindness, of forgiveness, of loving self? And maybe this time we didn't quite get there. And we'll have an opportunity to do it again, maybe in this back in this physical earth or some other space or galaxy, because there are millions of them. So the biggest thing is I found um, while we're here on this earth, it's really about loving yourself. First, I found, I don't know with your work, you found this, but the, the number one lesson I've found for most souls that come here is self-acceptance and self-empowerment and self-love. Because when you love yourself, the world changes. You see everything in a very different way. And you don't become a victim. And you become of your circumstances or so forth. And I always say, as Wayne Dyer used to say, uh, Terry Cole Whitaker used to say, what other people think of you is none of your business. I'm meant to and that. it's really true. Right, because nobody, nobody can tell you who you are. You're who you are. You, you know who you are. You know yourself better than others. People have to say, "When am I going to find love?" And I would say, "Well, I, how would I know? You know yourself better than I do. When are you going to find love? You tell me." I wonder though. So one of the things we've been teaching is, and and you may have people do this as well, is to wake up in the morning and before you even go to a place of thought, to hug yourself which ain't coming from you. It's coming from your higher self. It's coming from up above. In other words, it may even be. That your own opinion of you is none of your damn business. That's <laughs> exactly right. That, well, that, that lower part of you, really. That's that what I mean. I mean, the small yeah. self versus yeah. the big self. You know what? I, a friend of mine uh, who's a really talented medium, I had on my show the other night, her name is Janelle Campbell. She's from Australia. And she, I, I said to her, you know, when you do your work and what are the mindset you get into when you open yourself to the spirit? And she reminded me, she goes, Well, I had a teacher named James Van Prague once and was laughing. And I, and I gave, I gave the class, I guess, this, this symbology or this analogy, and it's really good, <laughs> if I say so myself. And she said, but what, what she does, and this works what you're talking about, is she creates a star in the heavens and the spaces. And she, that star, she brings in that starlight, and, or she goes to that. And really, that star represents your higher self, and it's bringing that, that down to this consciousness. That's, you know, and we can always do that with the breath. We can always bring it in, right? And let out the let out the heavy and bring in the light. <laughs> I was just, I was I was literally just writing about that this morning because I was writing about NDE number two, and I was given a choice to stay or to go, and I'm I'm in a creek bed waist deep. I've got bones sticking through the femoral artery. I'm bleeding bleeding out internally, and um and it was going to be this nice blissful place. <laughs> and and I had just told my wife this was many years ago. I was ready to have kids. So <laughs> you don't say you're ready to have kids and check out on your partner. Um, <laughs> no. So I chose, I was given a choice and I chose door B. And so here I am back on my body and I couldn't breathe. And so what I did literally is there was this brilliant light above. And I don't think that was the tunnel at this point. I think that was called Lake Tahoe sunshine, but I breathe in light, <laughs> sent out right. love, breathe in light, sent out love. The EMTs got there half an hour later. They're freaking out. California Highway Patrol, literally, literally they, they later, Cal state of California called me like six or 12 months later and said, do you want to press charges? These guys saved my lives. I'm like, what do I want to press charges? They're like, because they were saying so much profanity on, on the, on the, um, the microphone or the, what do you call it? Uh, uh, radio. 
when they should have been rescuing you. And, and they were freaked out because they had no, I had no blood pressure. <laughs> And so I'm like, they saved my life. <laughs> Use whatever language you want, but just breathe in light, send out love. That's what you're talking about. It's all, it's all love. I mean, it really comes down to life. Life is really simple. I think humans make it more complex. They get caught up in the complexity of the simplicity because I think life is a series of choices. That's all it is. So as souls, we're, we're here, born here, and everything is a choice. And, and, and when it first come into this world, we're very open and imaginative and limitless. And we have that beautiful energy of light. We've just come from the spiritual realm. So we really are bringing that in to our first many years here. And then I think around the age of six, seven, eight, we become programmed by the adults in that, you know, bedtime is this, you got to go this time or um, you, at school, you got to get an A on this test in order to be accepted or approved. And, and then it, moves on with other things, you have kids and you compare yourself to kids. And we tend to become people pleasers. A, a lot of people do. And I find that a lot of people, not everyone, of course, but around the age 30, mid 30s, 40s, they start questioning their lives because they don't feel like they fit in their own shoes. And most of them don't because they're trying to live someone else's life instead of their own. Yeah. They're living to please others and be approved and accepted. And that never happened. They first got to get back to that young child inside and I know you and myself share that very commonly. Mm -hmm. we, we have the young kid inside. We love to play. We love amusement. We love joy. And joy should be part of the journey. J-O-U-R-N-E-Y. Joy is part of the journey. And we need to remember that joy and that journey and not get caught up with the everyday stuff of this physical, dense vibration. And, and, and how I've done that, uh, I, I know you're going to ask this question, so I'll answer it because no, I'm psychic. <laughs> so... I, I, and I teach my students this. I say, you know, the best one, of the best advice I can give is perspective. It, when something's happening, you step back and you watch the show in front of you, like the stage show, and you're in the audience and you're watching it play out. You're not a part of that. You're just observing it. Now, there might be an opportunity for you to be one of the players, which we are on this physical earth, but you're just playing the role of a, of a son or of a father or a, mother, a daughter or a grandparent. And, and that's, and the, play changes it's, you know like shakespeare said the world is but bring the players on the stage uh and it's, it's really true that and i think you have to go onto those roles to learn those specific characteristics of what it's like to be a mother who loses a child or or someone who does suicide or someone has murdered i think it's all learning and it's, it's all learning even war coming back to be in war as i i don't think things happen the way you know, I, I do think there is a sense of free will, no doubt about it. But I do think in some way that before the incarnation, there are certain conditions that are set up and they could be a fork in the road. Like if things continue this way, you can have war. If things go the other way, you don't have to have war. But I wonder if, as to how many wars are destined to happen and how many are, you know, created through the mindset of politicians. Now, it's interesting, but I, I don't, I just, perspective is a big thing. And, and whenever I have people around me, you know, whether it's family or friends, I've gotten into headspace, like you took every morning, you wake up, and you hug yourself, that I wake up every morning with gratitude. And I wake up every morning with like, put my glasses on and that's see, see what the players are like today. Yeah. Everybody I meet, I'm having an opportunity that day that every person I meet on my path is either a teacher or a student. Mm -hmm. And it's up to me to share that love whether it's opening a door for someone, smiling at someone, have a nice comment. It's spreading that love in a, in a micro world because in the macro, we can't really take care of it. The micro, we'd start with this, right? And, and around our environment. And it's just changing the perspective and realizing that we're all souls, every one of us, and that we're all going through this passage of time and space, but we should make the best of this time and space. And the best way to do it is that choice of love. So as I said earlier, life is a series of choices, either love or fear. And fear is an emotion. It's a wasted emotion that's created in the physical vibration. It's not in the spiritual realms. Fear doesn't exist there. Lonely love exists there. So that's really interesting. And um, I, I, when I'm in a fear of something, say, okay, what part of me is in fear? Why am I fearful of this? What is the worst that could happen? So I think fear can be a great teacher if, you know, the right way, as long as it doesn't run your life. So, so hermeticism, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the micro, so the macro. And I might be adding to that a little bit, but the little decisions, the little decisions of going to a place of love, going to a place of love from fear, going to a place of love and spreading just a little bit of that in the day. I'm convinced, and I, I want to hear your opinion on this. I'm convinced, actually, that's a wildfire. 
that does make a massive difference on the face of the planet. I think so. I mean, we might not see the, it playing out as, as quickly as we would like to, but we're in a, we're in a you know, three-dimensional world here. But I think it's our responsibility to send out that love, to speak love, to share love, because everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be validated, as we should be. We're loving beings. And um, it's so interesting because one of the most um, incredible and common uh, responses I've had from spirit people when they've come back to talk. They say they have regrets. A lot of them have regrets. Say, wow, if I only chose love out of fear, I would have lived a much better life. Because, and then we go on, and, and you know this, and I've written about that, you've probably written about it too, is that, you know, like attracts like. So we're magnets. And if we bring that love in and give it out, we're going to bring love into our lives, and love opens everything up. It unifies things. It brings in, it opens that space for all that manifestation to happen. But fear blocks it. Fear limits things. And that's not natural. Fear is not natural. So that's why you and I are, are, and other, other light workers are trying to remind people that they're love. They're not fear. They're love. Fear is taught. You know? Love is intrinsic. Love is the way we are. Yesterday, <laughs> I traveled from uh, Newark to here in Florida. And I said, I have two. What was that like? <laughs> oh, and it was right before a snowstorm. What was it like? It was awesome. It was absolutely <laughs> awesome. Now, I must, I must say, when we got to Jacksonville, Jessica's like, can you feel that? She's breathing and she's like, it's not that the humidity so much feels great, but do you feel the difference in the energy? And there's a difference because that frantic, frenetic, competitive 50 million people in a tiny little space, as there was an advertisement where Newark Airport, it says 50 million people <laughs> are within this circumference of you that you can reach with this advertising. We're like, oh, can't breathe. But we went, I went on this trip and I went to the airport with two missions, two intentions. One, health. We keep our health no matter what, because it was in for the holiday, in for the holiday now. Second, we make friends with the TSA. <laughs> That's great, and we did. <laughs> I, I always, I always, I do, I, I always compliment them because it's a hard job. I think. It's oh really my god, hard. it is. And and you can, yeah. and they're and they're all getting hit with the opposite of love. And what a difference you can make. And, and typically, because we we carry you know baby formula and stuff. And what happens is, if you carry baby formula, somebody's getting the pat down. <laughs> it's, it's just a done <laughs> deal. And I'm like, I'll take the hit. Uh, <laughs> Here's the baby. That baby down. Yeah. I, you know, I, that's funny. It's, 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 that's one of the greatest opportunities to show love is in, in the TSA line, and also in the airports because a lot of people are. Oh my god! And, just beam it. Uh, just beam it. I always, you know what I do when people are like that? I go, how are you? And they go, I'm fine. So you look beautiful. I mean, your, your, your eyes are gorgeous. Or I love what you're wearing. And they love it. And they, they will open themselves up. They're like, wow. And they're being noticed. They're being validated. It doesn't take much. And I'm not being phony. I'm opening up their sense of love that they are, they are beautiful. And to get out of their head and into their heart, you know, when you, uh, sometimes you say things like that. Uh, compliment or, uh, you know, you're going to their heart space and, and that opens them up a little bit. And, and they might say, and this has happened to a coworker when I was at Starbucks, oh, that guy with a mustache, he's so funny. He was so nice. He complimented me on my apron or whatever it was. And then that person tells the other person it's a rippling effect. And then also we could think that this changes them in that, wow, if that guy acts like that, maybe I can act like that. I wonder if things would change. And um, I did it today. I did it actually today. And I don't like when I have to confront people. I don't like that, but sometimes we have to. I had my, my Ford truck in a, getting a battery recall or something. Uh, and it was over a week ago. And they called me up. I called them up and I said, well, is the battery fixed? This is like two weeks, a week and a half ago. And they said, we don't know what it is. I said, okay, we're gonna check the electronics. To make a long story short, it's been 10 days. No one's called me. And I mean, I was a good customer with them. And I called them yesterday, they wouldn't return the call. And it was a simple changing something out. Just inform me. So I left a message for the general manager. And I said, it was outrageous the way I was treated as a customer. I mean, it was just outrageous that no one can pick up the phone and tell me the condition of or status of the, of the truck. Like, what is that about? And I just had to point that out because it wasn't the right way to behave. It's not the right way to treat people. I'm not judging. I'm saying it's just customer service is customer service. Anyway, the, the GM called me this today and he really apologized. And he said, James, I'm so sorry. He goes, um, you know, we're understaffed. I said, I could tell that. I understand that. And I said, but the people that are there, he goes, I went down and I told Joe how to behave to customers. He goes, and Joe goes, well, it'll take 10, 10 minutes. And, he, and the guy goes, no, 
just three minutes, just listen to them, tell them what's going on. So it's a bit of training, but we have to be able to tell someone, not in a judgmental way, but there's got to be some kind of a way of in, in reminding people, right, that we're here for each other, that we, when we take these positions, even, even if it's a fast food place, I go and I smile all the time. I mean, there's, there's no difference in us. So they're by the counter, I'm the other side of the counter. I mean, really, we're all the same. I, I really, it's funny. I was picking up garbage the other day with the garbage men. <laughs> so I'll help you. I put the garbage, we're not competing here, but I put the garbage on top of the garbage can because they have to actually pull it out of the garbage can. I'm like, well, why don't I just make it a step easier for them? <laughs> Well, we just discussed before we started the show, your birthday is the 25th of August, I'm the 23rd. Yeah. So we have a lot of similarities, which yes. is very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. So do we all, now we've got a lot of hero. This means if this time period, there's another cleanse going on. We've got a lot of hero. We've got a lot of ascendant masters coming through to help teach humanity. Are we all here, A, a with a soul mission, and um, are the soul missions different today? Sure, I, I, I think so. And, and, and the thing you said was really important is coming and going. So I, I think that people have to realize that, um, you know, we souls, and, and again, we're all on different levels of awareness. And some of us are ascended masters or teachers or so forth. But um, I, I think there, I think that the intelligence of that world, the spirit world, if I call it that, the, the source, it's so beyond us humans. It really is. We look around our, our earth world, we have change of seasons. The clouds are moving, you know, the ebb and flow of the water. I mean, it's an amazing experience. What, what's behind all that? So I think that um, we as souls choose a certain time in the continuum of time in this school earth, and I think there are millions of schools, and I think millions of galaxies. This is just one. Um, and it goes back to a guide. When somebody asked one of my guides, they said, uh, "What's the level of the Earth, the, the evolution that people on this Earth? Where's Earth in, in, oh, in no. terms of spiritual evolution?" <laughs> and they said, "The Earth is a grain of sand on the beach. <laughs> there is now That's a level zero. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that we do uh, again. Like I think like attracts like. Yeah. The more one can ha have use love." utilize it in their life, you will bring to you those beings who work with you in that loving space, who are on that vibration. And the more we're open to it, we will bring that into our, our space. So I do think we have, everyone has guides and helpers, um, all different types of guides, whether it's um, joy guides, children or joy guides, maybe my professional guide. Uh, when I was first starting out mediumship, I had a doctor uh, from England who was working with me, a chemist, a scientist, a philosopher, a, a Catholic nun, I had all these different people, that, beings that were there, and they change. Many of them will change. As we evolve, they evolve. Their job is to get us one step, another step. And then there are some that stay with us entire lifetimes or just one lifetime. So it's always constantly changing depending on our soul's needs and our, our, our work we're doing. And, and remember that they're doing their work and they're evolving as well. By helping us, they evolve. So I think that's very interesting too. It's not just here, it's, it's there. And the other day also we talked to um, that same thing, Ascended Masters, guides came up and someone asked an interesting question. They said, well, they're not human. They don't have to be human. I said, God, no, no. Uh, there are many b beings, light beings. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd, call, we'd call them, you know, alien beings, but they're really not. But yeah, like not in the terms of the alien, but they're definitely light beings, legions. I once did a read for Shirley MacLaine, and it was really interesting. Several we're good friends, or we're, we're friends, and uh, it's hard keeping up with Shirley. But uh, she's one of the most fascinating people I've met, and I honor her because her book Out in a Limb really changed my life. And when I did a reading, all these beings came in from other star systems, you know, and we're all star seeds anyway. But these were beings who are at such a high frequency, and I knew that they were trying to come down to this level to get into my, and I'm raising my vibration, they're lowering theirs, but the information they have to give, it was very spiritual, it was very in depth. Um, but a lot of it was, they say, well, in the human mind wouldn't understand some of the things we're doing. The, the lower part of the mind would, but not the, the, the lower part of your mind, human mind would, but the higher aspects, you might not get, fully get them or understand them. So I know they're just giving, it's called droplets of God, you know, feeding us these droplets of God about kindness or compassion or, you know, forgiveness. I, go, I call them droplets of God. You know? I love it. What else have they told you? <laughs> um, that, that, it's very interesting. They've uh, it's often said, um, conditions will change. Con they call it conditions, and and it, it and it all is very much 
often there, but again, going back to yourself, controlling your own life, being aware of what's going on. Inside. This is what you're responsible for yourself. You are responsible for how you treat yourself, how you love yourself, and through that, your interaction with other pe- beings. Because if you love yourself, it's easier than to love other people. Um, the, 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 it's, so, it's so interesting because, again, the human condition. So humans, a lot of them live in fear. And if you get rid of the fear, and I don't know, it, it's hard because you've got to be more... I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. It's a, it's a tough one. It's a time where people are looking outside themselves instead of in themselves. And I think that they have to look in themselves. Um, the, the, the extremes, I think there's always a reason behind it. We might not know why. Like, let's say our political system right now, there's extremes. Um, red, blue, whatever you want to call it. But we have to learn something from that, that we've got to meet in the middle. And maybe this will force us in some way to meet in the middle, to, and, and hopefully it will. So I think there's always reasons behind it. We might not know the answers at the time these things are happening, but I think there's a larger, more expansive, bigger reason behind it more than we know as humans. Thank you. So I went out this morning. Um, I did some research for today's show and I heard stop it. <laughs> and and I, I, I know when I do research and I hear stop it, it's going to go in a completely different direction. And there is absolutely no point always. in doing the research. So always. I, I go out for a bike ride. <laughs> And um, I, I'm training pretty good, getting a good workout in. And then um, I see a, a, like a tree branch root in front of me that, you know, you got to jump over or something. I'm on my mountain bike and I hit the brakes and I almost hit that branch in front of me. That turned out to be this, this girl here. Oh, wow. Wow. That is wow. a diamondback rattler, the deadliest oh. snake in all of North America. So there's, there's her, her with her nice diamond evident there. P.S. just confirmed, and I thought so because her mouth was open as I came to come by. This is uh, considered a diamond, you can see the diamond pattern, a diamond rattlesnake. So this is the most deadly. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, deadly! I would have been if I ran over you, poor thing. This was this is the most deadly uh, snake in all of Florida. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, it's okay. I didn't hit you, but now uh, we got to figure out what to do here. How do we do this? I know. Oh, you poor thing. Um, I guess I don't want the next cyclist to come by either. So we really got to figure out what to do here. I got to get you to safety. Oh, you're so cute. Wow. And I came about three inches from her. She raised her head up and hissed. I jumped back while saying sorry. You know, you could see the long rattle, <laughs> rattle fangs. And then we just stood there together. Now she was in fear. So eventually I laughed. She didn't want to bite me. I didn't want to write over her. And I had just been talking to Jessica two days ago, my wife, Jessica, about I feel personally, and I feel like everyone's going through this, like I'm peeling off a tight skin right now of that snake and it's very uncomfortable. And here is literally the deadliest snake in all of North America in front of me. And we're sharing this moment and I'm going, I get it. You're my teacher. This is where we're going today. This is about transformation. I need to share this with James. And I'm going to go the other way because I respect you. (laughs) And I said love and love and love. Thanks to transformation. It represents transformation. My goodness. So the end of death and beginning of life. So isn't that where (laughs) we're at? We're at, yeah. So right now, we're in astrologically as well, we're in a major change, a major transformation space right now with the lines of the planets. So it's for humankind. And it's um, up, you know, good and bad, if you want to say that, up and down. Um, it's extremes. It's going to be extremes. So we'll see. I do believe there'll be another war. I do believe World War III will be happening. I do. I don't mean to be a doomer. I just feel that. Now, as I told that, well, my sister who passed over in April said, came back and said, you got to get World War III. You got to get out of there. I'm like, how do I get out of here? I mean, you know. but I, I did I she mean get out of there, LA? Did she mean get out of there, US? No, did get she mean get body. off of Earth? <laughs> get out of the body. Go back well, that's going to take God. care of itself. <laughs> 
<laughs> so don't worry. So, but it's um, it's you know, it's it's hard to look at it this way, but it's all learning. It's all it's all learning. Now you were open minded enough to stop, and obviously, I think you were looked after there. Yeah, if, if I had hit the snake, that would have been a, a really we we wouldn't be having the show today. Poor snake, but I would have been in the hospital at best. Yeah, but I th- I think one step more for you though, Michael, is you'd feel everything from the snake. You feel that connection. Oh, you yeah. feel that oneness. We we you know we feel that the, feel the oneness of that snake of, that's part of you. That's part of the. I'm going to do meditations now and go and connect with that snake spirit. We're not we're not done. We have a lot to communicate with each other now. Yvette, and maybe that'll be some kind of a logo or insignia or something you're going to do. Who knows? <laughs> so all right, I I've got to go there. Forgive me. Um, what have you been hearing? You, you can go anywhere you want. I, 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 <laughs> and, and, and it's you, funny. Don't. I got this chair. It's a gaming chair, but it's the best, most comfortable chair I've ever had for the show. And I call really? it my power chair. And I got it about a month ago. There's a logo of three snakes. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> it just came that way. I didn't know. I don't know anything about it, these, these chairs, except this one felt right. But OK, so you've heard from your sister that uh, World War Three is coming up. And, and this is, you and I both agree. So I know I know that you did Ghost. I know that you were offered, hey, let's have you uh, end the show on a dun 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 No, and you're going, not a freaking way because it's all about energy. I'm going to set people up for a higher vibration at the end, not a lower vibration. I get it. <laughs> so, so I want to go there, but I want to go there in a way that's going to raise people up as best as we can, because not only like attracts like, but we are projectors. We are projectors of our reality. So what what else has your sister been telling you or what have other spirits been telling you or how have the messages changed? Please. Let me interrupt you for a second because it's really interesting what you're saying, because um, how we can look at this in many different ways, but <clears throat> if that's inevitable, let's say because well... Life, one never knows. So the, the past has already happened. The future is yet to be. So all we have is this moment now. And it's what you're going to do with this moment right now. You know, what are you going to do with this moment? And if tomorrow was the end of your life, if you knew that, how would you behave today? So that is the way I look at it, is if this war where it's coming or something, and, you know, the death is inevitable for everyone, not necessarily in war, but we will all eventually go and move on, which we thank God we will. But how would we change our lives now? Would we change the frequency? Would we love ourselves more? Would we appreciate those other beings in our life? Would we thank people? Would we forgive others? Let us do that now and raise that vibration in those ways. Before we have to be forced wait for a war to start, we should be doing that every day. We should, I really do believe that forgiveness is one of the highest lessons uh, there is. I think it's, a, a, as you know, we forgive ourselves, medicine for ourselves. And it really frees us up. Um, forgiveness is really important, but I, I think we really need to do things today that you know we shouldn't put off tomorrow. Live for today, live for the moment, and live the best moment you possibly can. So at the end of your life, when you look back and you have your life review, you can look at the earth and I can say, wow, I made it a better place than I, when I started. It's better off than when I first got here. And that's what our, our thing is. And it's not just us. Everybody can have this awareness of that. Everybody should be, I want to make this earth a better place than when I found it. In, every, in any way they possibly can, you know? We had a, a snafu on, on time zones here before we got together today. And so I, I grabbed my daughter, whisked her off to the playground, and sat with her on a park bench, and then sat on another park bench. And then I think we had a third, or we sat on the dirt in the dirt. And we just took time to just not climb this, not run that. I would have been totally fine. In fact, she wanted to run a sand hill after that, and I was all for it. But just be with ourselves. How often do we do that? I was like, this is what I want right now. You know, father-daughter time of just hanging. And and you appreciate it just in that moment. And, you know, things happen for reasons. Now, I don't know. You know, we, we won't know until, I guess, we leave the physical vibration. But I think we're always taken care of. I really do. I think we're divinely led. I think things happen for a reason. I remember I was teaching, you've taught at Omega Institute, right? Uh, actually, the other coast. I, I've taught, taught Massachusetts at uh, Kripalu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so Omega right in, the, in the Hudson Valley, right? So I was at my, my class, I was going to the, uh, the Elizabeth Lesser's house across the Hudson River for dinner. And the girl drove me, you know, just drive me up because I have to go over the, over the bridge. But before we get to the bridge, I was like, oh no, I forgot my keys, my car keys back in the class. So we had to turn back and go back like 20 minutes. 
and then get the keys and then come back out and go back up toward the bridge. At that time, there was a, a collision on the bridge and three people passed mm-hmm. and it was like a three car collision. And if we had, if that had not happened, we probably would have been on the bridge at that particular time. So we never know why things happen in our lives, but there's always a bigger force or a bigger intelligence, I believe, behind it. Even when people say, you know, why did my child pass away? You know, adults, you know, parents should die before their kids. Who says? It's it's a soul. It's there's a reason behind. I really believe there's a reason behind everything, and we don't know it. And that's a frustrating thing for humans because humans want to control everything and they want to know everything. But I guess that's where hope and faith come in, and belief. And um, I don't know. That's just my, my sense of it. And, and and again, how I another thing is really interesting. But just if you don't mind, we're just speaking here. Um, that human beings tend to want to control things, right? But you can't control the people. And you can frustrate yourself and be angry and, and be upset because they're not following what you want them to do. Or, you know, and the thing is, well, you, you can't control others. You, they'll do what they want to do. They'll uh, make their own choices of things. What you can control is how you respond to them, how you respond to their choices of what they say, what they do. And you can accept it or not. And, and I call it boundary work, setting up boundaries, saying, you know what, that is not right. That remark is not right. Or, you know, I, I don't take negative things. It's not how we work. Whatever it is that comes out, we, we all have the power to do that. And I think more of us have to come into ourselves that, that power, that sense of that. We do, the future is not written. And at the same time, we're in some sort of an accelerator. We're in some sort of a, there seems to be a metal to the pedal at the moment. Well, there are four, there are four planets that are in direct. Four planets have gone direct, which means they go really fast. They're direct. They're not retrograde. They're not slowing down. They're four, and they're connected, really connected. So things will be faster and faster and faster and faster. But it's a great time also at this time to manifest your future. What do you want? What do you, like a vision board or putting out something that you want to materialize is a great time to do that. So this next like two months is a really good time today. And it is speeding up. Without a doubt, it's speeding up. Are there certain messages you're getting from the other side that are new or unique during this time? Patience. <laughs> Patience. I get clusters of certain messages at certain times. And lately it's been a whole bunch of, you know, you've got to love them for who they are at, what, at the level that they're at. You know, and just like people behave so because that's all they know. They don't know any better. They only know that. They're not aware of other ways of doing things. You know, they just know that that's the way it is. That that, that the level they're at, they think that's the way it has to be. So I was thinking about that, and that's come up a lot in in readings and messages this past several months. And then, I don't know how, but I'm walking in my garden, and all of a sudden the scene of of Jesus on the cross, right, with the two thieves, that whole thing, because I was going to be a priest, by the way. I was in a seminary. And that scene about the three of them there and... What Jesus supposedly said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It, it really hit me in a whole different way. They didn't know what they did. They had no idea that that wasn't the right thing to do. They just didn't know. So, you know, we got to forgive them in that respect that they don't know those things. They don't know, you know, like, I don't know biochemistry. I wouldn't be the first person. I'd be the first person. No way. I don't know it. So we have to accept ourselves and others for where the level that they're at. And I, that's coming in a lot lately. I love it. That's the, uh, it's the paradox. It's always paradoxes. Um, <laughs> we're in a duality. So we're in a duality world here. We have both sides. If, if you want somebody to be more patient, to learn patience, give them the opposite of patience. If, if you want somebody to give, to practice forgiveness and understanding, give them something so horrific, they can't possibly forgive or understand. Well, they could, but they, but if they had to go inside and just, I think inside our soul, inside of us, I think the soul is tucked neatly behind the heart. And I wrote a book once called Reaching the Heaven, and it was about, I think it was called Zygot, and it was a seed of the soul. Mm-hmm. And that the seed is carried through lifetimes of lifetimes of lives, and all the soul memories are there. And I think this is where, this has come up in, recently too in the past several months, that intuition, uh, that inner knowingness, that everybody has inner knowingness, and for all their tr- answers to all the questions, they just got to go inside that self, be patient, right? And learn to open up to that little voice within and to hear it in a subtle way and go from your head to your heart. That's what another one's come up. People have to live heart forward, heart first, not in the head, because there are many things we can't, it doesn't work that way. It works in the heart. The love is from that heart energy. And that's what um, solves so many things if one would start coming from the heart. 
And, and you can get frustrated by it, you get upset by it, or you can just see it for what it is and try to make it better any way you can, smiling, saying something kind, you know, uh, being patient in traffic, you know. Um, all, those, all those opportunities that we have, which there are many these days, to show kindness and forgiveness and love. Um, I go to a dog park every morning with my dog, Pearl. And what, what kind of amazing. dog? Wait, this is important. What kind it's, of dog? Uh, an Australian Shepherd. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I had an, an, an Aussie Shepherd coyote mix uh, a long time ago. Koi dog. Uh, smart. Very, very smart. Unbelievably smart. Unbelievable. I, mean, I think she's going to write my next book. She's that smart. I'm not, I'm not necessarily judging them, but I'm aware. I'm observant that some people go to the dog park and only just sit in their phones. They're not connected to the animals at all. And of course, I'm wondering what is going on here, but maybe they have social anxiety. Maybe they don't like to be there. But I'm like, wow, what an opportunity. So I go over to each person and say, how are you? Which dog is yours? Oh, I love your dog. And they, several people over these several months have had my animal of the year. They look at me like, I'm kind of weird with people do that anyway. But when I say, wow, what a beautiful animal. And, you know, it takes a beautiful uh, owner to have a beautiful animal. And they're like, huh? Reflection. So, and then they get it. They go, Thank you. Wow, that's that's great. And as they look at how great they're playing with other animals, and stuff, it's just to open up them to that. Uh, I don't know. To me, it's a moment in space and time that, of course, I'm a dog person, animal person. So, but what a rich opportunity to demonstrate love, to show love, to share love. You know. So I find that I'm, <laughs> that's my job. Dog parks, and I do that. I'm actually going to go on a tour, and you're going to love this one. At the end of June, it's called Sixty Five and Alive because I'm sixty five. And I'm alive. And I'm stopping in all these different 20 different cities, and I'm visiting all different dog parks throughout the cities. And I'm also doing demonstrations in each one of these cities. But I'm also going to bring my dog in the, on the stage. And uh, I'm going to visit every dog park that's um, from here to California to New York. <laughs> and uh, it'll be fun. I love it. So we we have a, an RV, which we got uh, last year because we, we had, he passed away this past summer, a, a pet rooster. And so he had the front top of the, of the RV. That was the, the uh, roost uh, for Rue. And then we have a place for all of the three kitties. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. and, and at some point we will have, I'm sure, doggy or two in there too. Because <laughs> you got to travel. Now? Right, now? Right, have... right now, uh, three kitties, three kitties only. Eventually, um, uh, Hannah Bear has been wanting a dog when the time is right. We're we're letting we're letting whomever or whatever when the time is right we're in no hurry <laughs> now i've always been i always was until rue a dog person i had uh, three koi dogs um i had uh, a german shepherd a Brittany who was a service animal for me and 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 on and on it went um so and born in the year of dog i am dog um i'm also rooster though and i will wait <laughs> i'm dog and rooster as well by the way Woo another similarity. Let's go for a few minutes because we talk about, well, we, well, we brushed, skimmed along the edge of understanding that all the world's a stage, uh, as you were mentioning Shakespeare, and, and that this really is a play. And we get all too wrapped up. I mean, I, I like to say life is too serious to take seriously. It really is too serious to take seriously. Have fun, drive it till the wheels come off. I mean, man, this is your one lifetime in this rental suit. <laughs> There'll be another. Have fun with it. What happens? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm often calling it um, life after life now. What happens after we transition? Wow. Well, this is an, another interesting insight that I've had since my sister passed in April. Um, which I, I, I've helped people pass over for 40 years in different ways. And I've been on the bedside. I've been, uh, it's been all very different. But she taught me something very strong um, and it's happened twice after that um, when she was ill she had a cancer when she was ill and i'm she's in new york i'm in uh, california and she's not in a coma she's in in, in a hospital bed but she's, not, she's aware alert and all of a sudden she's there with me in my in my house in california right in my mind and she said i'm being helped by sister rosemary i'm like sister rosemary who's that and then i remembered back when my sister was 14 years of age now 73 that she went to a camp in upstate New York and uh, it was a Catholic camp and her favorite teacher was Sister Rosemary. They had a great relationship and she always helped her then. And I was like, wow, that's kind of, how could she know that now? And then I realized what that means is 
which makes total sense. Our souls, when we talk about passing over, they're already over there. A lot of it is, a lot of them, the most of the souls are already on the other side, but it's that last like 10% that stays in the physical. And, and many of it stays here for others, our family members to get permission, or they're concerned about something. Like my father's concerned about the sale of his house. So that kept him a little bit. I think sometimes you gotta have permission to go. I've learned that, but the most of them are already over, over there. A friend of mine's husband just passed over two days ago. And she said, it's so weird, James, because a week before he went, I felt him uh, in the bed with me. He was, he was brushing my hair with his hand, and I knew it was him. He was right there, but he was still alive. I said, that's what happens. We travel a lot before we pass out of body, you know, and we've done it so many times. We've left the body millions and millions of times. So it becomes very familiar. I remember um, I was also, this past December, a double pneumonia. It was pretty, pretty bad. And it was pretty close to the edge. And I remember it was really frustrating because I had all these people around me coming to me, spirits, like, you know, it's your time, it's not your time. It's like, okay, then why do I feel like this? Because it was really interesting. It was like, well, you have to learn this. You have to go through this to understand what it's like for your health. I said, Got it. So don't, you know, don't take your health for granted. But the most important thing that for people to realize when, when you pass over or pass out of the body, which we do every night we go to sleep, the soul leaves the body every night we go to sleep, it is not painful at all. The worst part of death is, is leading up to it, right? Could be painful, but there are medications that have been invented, inspired to give that there should not be pain. It doesn't have to be. We're not supposed to suffer. I don't think any human is supposed to suffer. And it's um, everybody, it seems that, and you've had two NDEs, that there are people over there who are waiting for you. They come to get you. There's a reception. Many times I've seen in the beds, the hospitals, the rooms, um, there's so many beings who you, and, and it could be people that see you that you touch in your lifetime for just a split second. Maybe you um, said a kind word to someone. Maybe you gave someone something. And it's these small gestures that these souls remember that you impacted their life. And you can think the smallest of ways, but it made an impression. And they come to get you. And it's very, very interesting because um, this is fascinating too. We just came, came up with this recently. Um, I bring through a lot of fentanyl people, you know, people that died yeah. of fentanyl. And it's, and it's common in that, and I just found this out uh, probably about a year or two years ago. They said, when one person said that 19, mom, I was met by um, this guy, Joey, and Joey was blah, 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 and he died of fentanyl poisoning. So it just so happens, by the way, Joey's mother was on the other side of the auditorium, but it's a whole other story. But it seems that those who help each other over, it depends on the conditions they pass. So the person that dies of an addiction, let's say fentanyl or, or whatever, or someone of a suicide, Many of their relatives will meet them, love them, but also those beings who've gone through that experience of a suicide or of an addiction and passed over in that way because they are the best ones to know what the mindset is for that newly arrived soul to go through. Who else would know better than the ones that have been through it? And then I thought about that, and that makes sense. And then the other thing, which I got a threat to, which is kind of wild, I brought through a man who was a suicide. He was about 40 years old, and he showed me um, – this was in Houston – he showed me his um, – himself in a military uniform. I said, he was a military man. She goes, oh, yes. I said, there are honors here and there are awards. Yes. And I said, wow, now this is interesting. He was met and helped over by his brothers and sisters of the, of the uh, military. And because he said, they never forget, once we make that oath, we are there, life and death. And they helped those other soldiers, other military will help those fallen over, even if they didn't know them. They bring them over. So they honor them that way. So it's a release. It's a very natural experience to pass out of the body. Um, again, there's that sense of reunion. Everybody goes to their own funerals, and uh, everybody goes to their own services, if you will. Um, my sister uh, had a Catholic funeral, and I'll never forget it. We went to her wake, an Irish wake, and I heard her say, as soon as I sat down next to my cousin, she said, James, what is going on here? What? I, I, I said, Lynn, this is your wake. And she said, why is this happening? I said, because you wanted it. She goes, it's such a waste of people's time. I feel so bad wasting their time. Because you know that's not me in the box. I said, I, I know that. She goes, oh, I feel so bad wasting these people's time. So that was an interesting one, too. Because we really don't have a sense of that body anymore. It's like an old, worn-out overcoat. We're very relieved to leave it behind. As you know, from the NDEs, that the feelings that you get. And, and I was watching this other... Um, I watched the YouTube NDEs, these stories. There was this 83-year-old man who talked about his in the 1950s. He drowned in the lake. And it was so interesting how he went through and he felt the bottom of the, 
the, of the lake and he felt, he knew he couldn't breathe and he heard a voice that just relax, relax. And he eventually relaxed and he went to this light. And he said, the light was God, light was everything. We are all knowing. We know everything we pass over. We know everything. It's this valley of forgetfulness we go through in the physical, then we forget the truth, but we all know things when we pass over. Hannah Bear, who you just met tonight, um, her twin sister uh, passed away in utero and 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 now is my head guide. She's like, oh, I, I'll, I'll speak for these guys over here. And she, she's, she's, she's in, in cahoots with me on a daily basis. Are you from New York originally? Uh, my family is, yeah. Yeah, there's a lady next to you from New York, New York area. She's a New Yorker. She's a strong personality. I know it's like a grandmother, but I feel like the lady comes knows of you in the family. That's Grandma Mildred. And uh, okay, she's really strong, <laughs> and she's really personable, and she's really proud of you, and she's happy about the teeth. Don't ask me why she's talking about the teeth, but she's happy about some change of teeth. <laughs> but that I, I was on the phone really... with the dentist right before speaking with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Can't make this up. There's also someone named Sarah somewhere over there. Sarah. Well, there's so a Sarah. my my service dog's name is Sawa, which means the enlightened one in Tibet. Could it be that S A W A? But Sawa is still alive. Yes. Uh, no, Sawa's not still alive. Oh, so Sawa's on the side. Okay, so that might be the the Sawa that I'm getting. She's with bringing this to you. I also need to ask you: Did she ever like to make clothing, or when she was younger, or made made dresses, or sewed, or put garments together? Uh, Grandma Kramer, um, I have absolutely. Yeah, Mil- I have no idea. Yeah, uh, Mildred, I have no You'll idea. You'll have to find out. And was there any ties toward Brooklyn at one point? Yeah, so she lived in Brooklyn. Uh, all of the years that I knew her was Brooklyn plus a you know, summer home in New Jersey, but she was a Brooklyn. I, I was just impressed the Brooklyn Bridge in my mind, you see. And she loves those days. 30s, 40s, she was there. It was great. And even I, I there must have been a ride to Staten Island. You should me some of Staten, going to the ferry in Staten Island talks about her so her I family came on staten island i believe she was she was born oh, here but her family did go through staten island i just uh, see staten yeah. island was prominent for her yeah. she said that staten island she remembers that was prominent I, I would say she's frugal but i said she pays attention to the money when she was around and those days i think had to but she's um and she likes newspapers and she's with the man there who'd be grandfather to you who read newspapers he likes to read the newspapers gotta say that to you and, and, and it was, uh, there was also a sense that there was someone who worked with ca- cars in some way. I uh, liked cars or worked with cars. That's a mechanic, but you, I just see driving an old car. It's interesting. It's like a 40s Chevrolet. That I Sorry. don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, I, I know my it's grandfather weird. on the other side, he loved his, uh, what was it? Lincoln I think it's your father's Mach father. Fa. I think it's your father's father. Yeah. I think he loved his father. old Lincoln. Yeah. And it might have been, um, he must have, has, was he also from New York and New Jersey? Uh, he was, I, I don't know his, his origin, but he was a, I knew him in Massachusetts, but he had family in Florida. So he may have also been, I don't know. If okay. he was, well, I don't, I don't know. There may be something, but I, I just get definitely with him. There's a feeling of parades. Mm-hmm. I have parades and, and have, have fun picnics, parades. I see water. I see like the boats in the harbor. I see, I love that. And he just loves that parade feeling I get with him. That'd and be more my grandma, that be my grandmother's uh, father, uh, grandmother's uh, husband, um, who is more of the fun, jovial dance parade. Okay. Kind of I like he did, he I, did have a, like a car, that. a brand new car when I went to visit him in Brooklyn. And he said, look out the window. I just got this car earlier today. It was oh, gone. Wow. <laughs> it was stolen <laughs> within a few hours. They found it stripped and burned on the highway by the next morning. Oh, there's the Brooklyn. car thing. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, wow, that's wild. Yeah, they're very proud of you, though, over there. And you will get more animals uh, coming sooner than you think. <laughs> oh, Sorry. God. I see two dogs. Yeah. See that. Cool. Yeah. Um, They're very proud of you. Is is there anything that they need me to know right now? Um, is there anyone named Francis? Uh, there, there is a uh, a Francis who is uh, Hannah Bear. Or my my, I guess she'd be my niece, uh, Hannah Bear's cousin. Are you going to be seeing Francis? Or just, just saw Francis or? yesterday. Sorry. Because there's a lady here talking about that Francis person. So she would be associated with her, I believe. Huh. Francis. Yeah. Um, now keep on doing what you're doing. And um, 
you're not doing it alone. I mean, they're right with you. And you do have many beings around you. I mean, gal- we can call it galactic. But uh, yeah. Have you ever thought about artwork, doing any art ever? So I went to Catholic high school. And <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so <laughs> yeah, I don't remember his name. But there was a, a, um, a brother who sent me to the dean's office um, after I was in art class and I had done a drawing. It's probably the last drawing I've ever done. And he said, you can't possibly be this bad at art, Michael, or drawing, Michael. You must be doing this just to piss me off and sent me to the dean's office. And I was that bad. <laughs> so... I feel like this time period now, well, it's interesting. I have a business card from somebody for wall art right next to me. This is a time period of getting back to my artistic side, but I do feel maybe it's more the writing, the music, but it is a time of artistic expression for me and not to leave that behind. Yeah, yeah I'm very down to earth, so I don't know if that makes sense, but I, that, that doesn't feel right to me. What feels okay. right to me is Drawing. I see bright colors around you. And and what that, to me, I, I just sense that is, that whether you're going to change your logo, the way you do your business, there's something with bright, brighter colors coming your way. It's like splashes of these colors. And I think it's more to do with the newness of your, your work, getting it out there in a different way. It's going to be more colorful. And it's a beautiful design. And I just got to say that, um, just watch for it. You'll see. It'll be, it's nice. It's like rainbow colors or something. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> and you'll let me know. I look forward to it. And I am certainly not the uh, the drab color guy. And I think this is probably, or at least used to be your favorite color as well. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah, that's right. So there you go. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What, what does it mean that we have two deaths when we cross over? Um, well, the, the first death is say, our initiation of when we when we initially leave the body. Um, when we take our last breath is when we leave the body. Uh, when that that ten percent of the soul leaves the body, I put it that way. And so there is a, a tends to be. And again, I, I feel so weird talking about this stuff because I don't want to make sure I get it right. Because when we pass up, like, is it exactly what you meant? From my understanding, I'll put it that way. Well, we all have a filter. Stuff. Let's let's just say that to everybody. Yeah. We all have a filter in this, whether it's 10%, 30%, it's coming through that filter and we do the best we can. That's right. That's right. And, and it's just that the first initiation is getting used to the new world. So mm-hmm. many call it the astral world, that, that spirit world. And, if, you know, beautiful, beautiful gardens and colors of flowers of all different shapes and sizes and beauty and textures over there. Colors we don't know even in this world. We don't know these certain colors. Um, there are things over there. It's all done. It's a very mental world. So you think of something and it materializes. Um, and many times people are brought over to the other side. This is an interesting one. Again, it depends on the condition of the soul. It depends on the belief system of the soul. It depends on what they need. Um, so many times they'll go to the belief system. Like my mother was very Catholic. A priest came to get her to bring her over. She accepted that. She went right in. Um, scientists might have a scientist that they knew come by. Um, and they usually, this is interesting. Some people pass over whom are not quite sure yet what's going on, they often will bring them to the mother's house. So there's an exact replica the spirit people have created of the mother's house that that soul will remember when she was a little girl, that that's exactly what mother's house looked like. And they've created that in their minds, in this mental world, for that soul to adapt to a new environment. So once that soul, and they might say, come on, sweetheart, now this, is, this seems like a dream. She goes, it seems like a dream. No, sweetheart, you just rest your mind. You just rest and you will eventually, you know, it'll come to you. And what tends to happen, again, depending upon the type of, of passing it is, um, they tend to go through a bit of a rest period, a little bit of rest period. And, and what's happening, I believe, is as they're resting, the life force, the prana is rejuvenating their soul. So they're rejuvenating the, the soul being rejuvenated with that prana because a lot of life force is taken away during this transition or leading up to the transition. So they get refilled up. And it seems that they open themselves up and they're there. They have this awareness of that. And it's like, wow. And it's um, and they get into the whole space of knowingness and they begin to understand themselves from a soul point of view, not a human point of view. Mm-hmm. And they begin to see the human part. It's just a very small, small, small part of who we are. And um, they get to see themselves as a beautiful being that they are, this beautiful light soul. And and many spirits often will feel sadness in that if only I knew this when I was living, I would treat myself better. I would have made better choices. So that happens. There are people there that, um, and a funny story, 
Interesting story. I worked with a lot of celebrities and political people and all that. I was once in a garden in Laguna Beach where I lived for a while, and there was a rose garden. I used to go out there, just walk around, and all of a sudden, Lucille Ball came to me. And I didn't know Lucille Ball. I never gave her a reading, but I loved her, and I loved her from growing up with I Love Lucy and so forth. And I said to her, you know, that was really amazing. <clears throat> and now people will say, well, how do you really know it's her? I can't answer that. I just know what I'm feeling and sensing because I'm pretty skeptical about it. You know, and I, over the years, I know what to feel. And it just popped into my head. And she said, you know, James, I wasn't what people make me to be. I, she goes, yes, yeah, so funny. It was an ability I had, but I came back to the earth to heal people through comedy because laughter brings up that vibration. Yeah. And she goes, a lot of comics are there to help people to bring up, but they heal, heal the human race. Welcome back to heal and to serve. And that was my mission. And then Marilyn Monroe's come through me uh, through a reading with Susan Strauss for many, many years ago. And she came to the very end of the reading, you know, and, and she said, I said, there's a Norma. I didn't even know at that time her name was Norma Ray, but Norma, I said, Norma's her. Yeah, that's her. I said, well, all I'm getting for you is she's saying to me, I wish they, mean the public, would pay attention, would pay homage to themselves instead of to me. Ooh. That's all she said. <laughs> so... And then one more I want to, tidbit I want to leave you with. We talked about galactic beings and so forth. Yeah. I was once in Sedona, but brought a group of people there to see UFOs. And we um, we didn't see any at 10 o'clock at night. And I heard spirits say, you need to raise your vibrations. You need to meditate, raise the vibration, the frequency. So I guided everyone in meditation, rose the frequency. And we opened our eyes and we began all to see these colors of these objects, far away, close, one of like a TV antenna. TV, like a studio with the antennas. And, and the man that was helping us said, they're here. I said, I see that. He said, can you get communication? So I went out to this field and I opened myself up to that space. And I first thing I said, you know, I always sense first, I'll feel and sense first. And I felt that these beings were there. I knew they were from the Pleiades. And I knew that they were so immense. And they were really trying really hard to put like all that, some information into the head of a needle, right? It's like putting all that in the head of a needle so that the human can understand it. So they had to keep it very simple. And the truth is very simple. What they said to me, what they impressed me with was, you human beings have the energy of love all around you, yet you don't use it. Why is that? And that was all they said. True. <laughs> Why do you think? Yeah. Why don't we use it? Because, number one, we're, we, we're, we're taught to be someone else, do better. You have to be, we have to follow this way. We got, you know, we, we get we get pulled away from ourselves, we get programmed a certain way. And we don't have that sense of self. I think that's changing now. I think now, maybe to an extreme, but I think people become much more aware uh, of themselves. I think even spirituality has changed. I think it's much more available to people, much more aware. Um, it definitely is. That when I first started, it definitely is now. So I think it's people beginning to get it. Takes time. <laughs> you you had double pneumonia. I I also have been down this road, um, misdiagnosed, and thankfully still here. We're one of the same. I tell you, it's so funny. <laughs> totally. What are the? It, I, see, I look at that as as an upgrade time period. Uh, plain plain and simple. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, I saw a transformation of letting go of the old, coming into a new space and an awareness of it. And I wasn't afraid of it. It was more annoying than anything. It was more annoying than, you know, you know coughing every five seconds was a little more annoying than, you know. Uh, it, uh, it's interesting. It's all seeds planted on us and we don't know when the seeds are actually going to germinate. But what what have you learned about yourself or about the world since then? Or how has your oh, perspective I'll, changed? I, 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 well, I learned something from that. One, yeah. one of the lessons I learned from that, and it's kind of like my nature, was I can't give so much. I got Everything's got to be moderation in life. Yeah. You can't overdo things. You can't go to the extremes. And I've been a person that's extreme in that, you know, I want to help people, but sometimes, you know what? It's not good. It's not healthy to do that. You really want to do it, and it's healthy, but it taught me a very valuable lesson that I, I overdid it. I, I, can't, I can't be everything to everybody. And I did, I did an Alaskan tour, which was a work tour, and everybody was sick on the boat with COVID. And then my 60th, 60th birthday was COVID. And then um, I went, I didn't, I got home and I rested and I was negative. But then I went on a tour to Europe to four different countries. And it was, it was just 
really too hard. It was grueling. And I got another bout of European COVID from that. And it was just a sense of, and, and, and the workshops I was in, they weren't really satisfying me to the level I'd like to be satisfied because I really wasn't in charge of it. I was just following through someone. In there, done this. And it, it made me realize that I can't do that. I got to do things on my own. And I, I, I can't say yes to everything. I, I just can't do that because I'll, not, I'll you know, knock myself out. That's, so I learned that. I learned that moderation is valuable. And as you get older, be more aware of your health is really important and um, never take it for granted. And uh, I also learned that there are people in your life who are really are there for you. And there are others who just do lip service. And I learned that too. <laughs> so not that I judge them, I think those come to our life for season, reason, lifetime. So I, that was reinforced as well. So speaking of that, what is your sister? Is she helping to guide you? How is, how is she working with you now? She's very, very funny because, you know, we didn't speak to each other for a long time. And then we did two years before she passed over. We talked and her death is one of the best experiences for all of us. Uh, we were, there were four of us all together. So the three of us, we learned a lot. And one of the things was, um, should we go in and out of consciousness? She wanted to take pain medication. And we said, you have to take pain medication. It's you have to. It's cancer. You got so what she did, and she's zero, zonked out, and then came back up. And she would often say, am I dead yet? Did I go yet? She said, no, not yet. She goes, oh, my God, as a New, total New Yorker. Jesus Christ, when am I going to pass over? I'd like died six times already. When can I go? And uh, it was it was. I'm great sorry. Please she, forgive but, me. I get it. <laughs> right? And she was um, she was very – her sense of humor stayed, stayed and, and it has stayed. And then when she came back and I was the plane ride going home and she said, you guys got to get out of there. It's going to be World War III. You got to get out of there. Okay, thanks. How do we do that? But she said, um, she said right away, you know, we're part of many worlds. You know, we just think in the human terms that we're just this one world, but we're really part of all these different worlds. And when you pass into that vibration, you see you're part of that world, and that world. She goes, and you can have anything you want. You can go to that world for a little bit and that world and study that and become an expert in that world. But everything's open to us. And she said, we come back, we specialize on this, in the earth. We will specialize in one particular thing for one purpose or one mission. But we really are a bit of little everything. And one is always learning. There's never, you never stop learning. You continue learning. It's more of a mental learning, I guess you'd say, in the other side. Here it's more physical. That's more mental, um, I guess would be. so. And, and she also talked about all the different worlds that exist in that, you know, she was on a tour to different levels, the different levels of the astral mm. world. Because people go to the level which they've created based upon their thoughts, words, and deeds. And um, if I could just quickly tell a quick little fun story. It's a little fable. It's a fable. Um, this very wealthy man passes away, very extremely, one of the wealthiest men in the world. And he meets St. Peter at the gate. And St. Peter says, oh, yes, we've been expecting you. You know, God has created your wonderful home here. He goes, oh, good, good, let me in. So he lets him in. And they go in this beautiful park and green grass and gardens and children playing in this beautiful, lovely environment and lovely houses and mansions everywhere. And as they're walking down this pathway, he said, this, this man said, wow, these are like the mansions I used to have uh, on the earth. It looks very, very nice. Where, where is mine? And uh, uh, St. Peter said, oh, down this way, down this way. They go down this path, goes down to the, the right side, go down these steps, and it begins to get a little darker. And he can't see as much in the houses. A mansion very small now and then it's getting dark goes where, where are we going this must this is the wrong turn i i this is not me for me i'm one of the wealthiest men in the world and i have people that work for me and mansions and this is not we're taking the wrong road god must be wrong and he turns to me and said god is never wrong so he goes your place is coming up they go down further down this this pathway down these steps and everything's almost dark you barely see in front of you but you were they're able to make up these little boxes kind of in the di distance with little lights on them in them and saint peter said that's your home that's impossible that can't be my home i was with the wealthiest men what are you talking about how could that be my home and saint peter said we could only build with the materials you sent us <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Very good. It's, it says it all. It does. <laughs> and it's the way it is. We, we, we create every day with, a, you know, again, if we want a lovely place we pass out of the physical, create it now in your mind and how you treat people in your heart, sharing, loving as best as you can. As you don't know, you don't know what you're going to touch in someone else. You don't know what they need to hear. Just be loving, you know. There's enough hate out there. There's enough, like, 
wokeness out there. Enough is enough already. It's just love. <laughs> so on that Yay. note, what's your school of mystical arts? Where can people find it? Where can people find out more? Okay, so if people are interested, I have a school online. It's called the JVP School of Mystical Arts, and it has over 44 different courses and mastering uh, life coaching, uh, psychic phenomena, psychic portals, uh, mediumship one, two, and three, uh, really in-depth, like 60, 70 videos per course. I am, it's a lot of um, online stuff. I do per personal uh, connections with people online as far as having group classes. It's all different. They're all different from healing to psychic work to uh, life coach work. Um, all different types of things. So that's the JVP School of Mystical Arts. Okay. And we'll put that link down below as well. All right. Two last okay. questions for you. Um, okay. First off, not just on the world, has your perspective on people's lives changed or the arc of people's lives or your understanding of people's lives changed over the years? It's interesting you say that because again, it's so funny how things just pop into our minds and and when things are co coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. I really believe that. But we have these coincidences every day or validations. And probably for the past three years, mm -hmm. out of the weirdest things, I'll be whether the, at the grocery store or standing in line for Starbucks or something. And inevitably, I'll have someone say, I want to thank you for your books. You changed my life. And it's happening all over the place. And even with it, now the best one was, it's happening a lot more in the past three years that I finally see, not that I need it, because just do the work, because you, know, you just give it out and you just do it. But I've got a lot of people now coming back into my world, my orbit, who have been touched by the work and it's helped them in ways. And, uh, you know, I'm just doing the work and I'm really happy and pleased, you know, and I, I'm just doing my work, right? So I do that. But it's funny and I'm really happy that it's been touched by so many people because that was the intent was to open people up. Um, funny thing was I was with, a, I went to a doctor during this, the pneumonia thing, and he was a, a specialized doctor in La Jolla. And um, I, I, I go into the room and he's there in the very forties. And of course my personality says, how are you? Good, what's your name? Uh, my name is Ali Sali Ale. I said, oh, that's great. And where, where is that from? He said, well, I'm from Kuwait and I'm also Irish. I said, Okay. And when's your birthday? He goes, I'm a Taurus. I said, of course, you're a good looking man, Taurus, beautiful sign. And you have a wife. Uh, yes, I have a wife and uh, I have a child, one on the way. And I said, oh, and you're going to be moving soon. And he goes, wait, how do you know that? And I said, oh, I'm psychic. And he goes, wait a minute, take off your mask. I recognize your voice. I used to watch you on television with my mother when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And, it's, and he just told me how... Um, then he went on to tell me how his mother went to a demonstration of mine and I brought through his sister that passed and it changed her life forever. See, and, and that's, and it's, it makes you really, really happy that you were able to be that instrument to do that. It's all I can say, but it's, you know, it's, 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 it's just the work that we do. It's our, it's our service work. I don't think anything special of it. I just don't. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, I'm a double earth sign, so maybe that's it. And I think I'll get all that when I pass over. I'll get a lot of that. People will meet me in reception. But I just do it because it's the way, I don't know, it's just the way we should, I, I, we should do it. You do the right thing. I live by the golden rule. I really, really do. And the more I live by it, the more I see people that don't live by it. <laughs> so it reinforces that, you know, with, with, with it. Yeah. And, and you may have, you may have answered this already, but any last words? And, and this has been, I love how we've gone over the place, but we've come back to the same theme time over time after time after time about how we get to live moving forward, how we get to live. Well, forget about moving forward now here in this very moment. Well, everything is, you know, every moment opportunities, right? So there are opportunities, whether it's a really a difficult situation, whether you're having a fight with someone you work with or live with or whatever it might be. Step back, step back and see the whole situation and don't get plugged into it emotionally because then you won't see it clearly. Step back and see it from a soul's point of view. What are you learning? What are you learning or what are you teaching? And you don't have to get angry with someone. Just step back in the perspective. I think we need to have perspective um, of what we're learning, teaching. And also we have to realize that we have power, power with our words. Our words mean something. Words have an energy, and you can destroy someone with words. Um, and that's really important to know that. Even in thoughts can destroy people. You know, and when you pass over, like I said earlier, you're going to see all of your thoughts, all of your words that you let out, and you're responsible for them. 
Um, one more thing I want to close on, which is interesting. So another story. At 40 years of doing this work, I love stories. Another touching that happened in Jersey. Um, another touching story. This lady's mother came through, and the mother had, I guess she had maybe Parkinson's or a coma, but she was in a coma for about, I think, three months. And um, she said, I'm going to thank my daughter. She helped me pass over. She helped me. She used to read to me every day next to the bed. And the daughter said, yes, I did. And the mother said, now his mother couldn't communicate when she was alive, when they had never alive. She said, please tell my daughter, I'm going to cry, that all of those spiritual uh, books, the sentences, the words, the insights that she was reading me, I might not have heard them at the time, but they were waiting for me when I passed over. Oh, wow. So it made the transition easier. I love that. So nothing, nothing is just, nothing is nothing. Things are real. Things, things are energy. And we got to be responsible for what we say, think, and speak. When, act, I should say. <laughs> Not a ray of sunshine is ever lost. It's true. It's what you do with a ray of sunshine. Yes, yes. Let's beam Make it out. Grow. That's right. Heart forward. Absolutely. Care Bear Stare forever. <laughs> so thank you so much, James. This has been phenomenal, thank you, Mike. phenomenal, phenomenal. So for everyone out there, oh, you are most, thank most, you. most welcome. Um, good Appreciate things come it. to those who wait. It's true. <laughs> it's true. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, step back, step way, way back, and then lean forward with your heart and with those rays of sunshine and with everything you've got and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> awesome, 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 my brother. This was beautiful, James. <laughs> we just had the most beautiful talk with James from Prague. Yeah. <laughs> and and my guess is that she's not saying, but maybe she would say, is that if you want to raise your vibration up, way up like Hanover, up to the max, then you'll see that link down below for dailywoohoo.com where we share stories, where we share insights, don't we? I know, on a daily basis, it's free, dailywoohoo.com. If you want to join the School of Mystics, oh, she said bye again. And come join us four weeks a month as we bring your vibration up, 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 and way up and teach you how to live at the top, at the top of the mountain itself. Hi! <laughs> Click that link down below for the School of Mystics. Hi! Anything else you want to tell them about automaticwriting.com? Um, um, yeah. Um, and if you're saying, come join the School of Mystics, come join the School of Mystics. Oh, come, come join. Come, come. Yeah, that is what you're saying, isn't it? Here's a link to the next amazing show. Love you so, so much. Keep on shining bright.